morning, this is Ramsey Dabby, and we're here today to talk about today's lesson, which is columns. So we're going to give this a shot and see how it comes out, and uh, let's jump right in. So, if you think of columns, what do you think of? Well, generally you think of a vertical member, and you think of the column being under compression. That is a load on top of it, and it push, pushes down, tending to crush. This is very true. But let's take a closer look at how columns behave and what types of columns there are. So if I have a column that's short like this, right, and I put a load on it like this, we know that the chances are that this column, if I increase the load, eventually is going to what? It's going to crush. And for the most part, that's pretty straightforward. But columns are not always this short. Columns tend to be sometimes a little longer. So here's a little bit longer column. And if I push down on this, well, chances are that's pretty much going to crush too. In other words, it'll fail by crushing as the primary... Oops, it's starting to do something which I didn't want it to do. It's starting to fail by the primary mode of failure, which is going to be crushing. Ah, but now the column begins to get longer than that. Ah, here it is. Okay. So now we have a slightly longer column, and now, uh, well, um, let's take it to the extreme. To the extreme. And if you put a, had a column this tall, whoa, whoa, and we put a load on top, well, you know what? It's not going to crush. It's going to do something else. It's going to kick out like this. It's actually going to start to bend. And this uh, phenomenon is called, phenomena, is called buckling. Right? And you can see that once it begins, if it's not controlled, it will just continue to buckle, in other words, bend, and a whole other set of rules apply to the failure, uh, how to treat the failure of this, of this column by buckling. Okay, pretty straightforward if you have a uniform cross-section, such as this uh, piece of sponge is, or this column is. As you see, it's, it's uniform, there's no, ex there's no difference uh, in its cross-section. But let's take another now a, 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 a look at a column such as this. And as you can see, this column has a, a cross-section that, that is not uniform. It's not symmetrical. It's longer this way than it is. Uh, it's longer in this direction than it is in this direction. So let's look at this column. This is a long column. As a long column, we know that chances are it's going to fail by what? Buckling. Right? Here, you see it. But what do you notice? It's failing in this direction rather than failing in this direction. It's failing in this direction rather than this direction because this direction is stronger. This direction is stronger. That's a function of the cross section and I'm beginning to lose the thread of what I was <laughs> But Okay, so in, in a nutshell, column failure is a function, or, or column behavior is a function of what? It's a function of the length. It's a function of the material of which the column is made. Obviously, if this is a piece of steel rather than a piece of wood, it's going to have more resistance to, um, to failure. So the length, the material, and very, very importantly, the cross-section and how the cross-section is oriented. No, that doesn't make sense. And, and the cross-section. And I think that's enough for today's lesson, if you can absorb that. We'll get into the details of cross-section, that is moment of inertia, radius of gyration, slenderness ratio, all kinds of complicated, more complicated things. I need a, just one more second. The other thing we'll get into eventually is the material strength. And... Um, uh, 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 certain functions known as the yield strength of the material and the modulus of elasticity of the material. A subject for another lesson. Thank you.